Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's Elephant Professional Lecture. Um, and it's a special one for us because uh, so far, I think this is number 18 or something like this of Elephant Professionals that, we, that we've had. Um, and for the first time, uh, we actually have somebody who was um, born and bred and raised up in an elephant range state, an actual elephant professional, unlike us, all of us other foreigners who've been talking about this and making noise for, for a very long time. So very, very pleased to actually have a Thai person to talk to you today. Um, and not only that, an extremely qualified and, um, and special Thai person, uh, Dr. Pakanut, Dr. Im, um, who is, has since, I think, or she'll tell you the state of it, but she, is, she has been pr provided or provided us with, so far, as far as I know, the, the only long-term peer-reviewed published study of a welfare assessment of uh, elephants within a tourism setting in Thailand. Um, she, the project was between 2015 and 2017. Indeed, it's actually ongoing at the moment. Um, and she started out just trying to ascertain exactly what, well, first of all, different ways in which elephants were managed and try, and try and sort out if there were any common ways in which we all managed our elephants and then moved on to try and work out which parts of what we were doing was good for the elephants and which one was bad for the elephants. Um, I won't go into too much, uh, too much detail because I know her, her talk will be very, very, uh, her talk will be very detailed. Um, and if you have any questions at the end, please either leave them on the, ask them on the Zoom, we will give you a chance to do that or leave them on the Facebook. So. Um, without further ado, I will hand you over to Dr. Im, and she will tell you exactly what it is that she's been doing and why. Hey, so can you hear me clearly? Very clearly, thank you very much. Okay, so I should share my screen to our view. Okay, so can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, thank you. We have it totally. Okay. Hi, everybody. And uh, thank you, John, for inviting me to the lecture. And thank you, all of your staff as well for the help. Today, I would like to share our work on the welfare of elephants in Northern Thailand. And as you know that there are nearly a thousand of elephants working in elephant camps in the north, mainly in Chiang Mai province. So we hope we can improve their welfare and manage this population in a better way. So that's our goal. We started the project, um, as John said, about five years ago. At the beginning, I was just curious to know what kind of activities are good for tourist camp elephants. Um, normally, there are five types of work for the elephants in Thailand, included riding with a saddle, riding bareback, no riding, elephant show, and observation. And from the picture, in riding with a seat or a saddle, tourists sit on the saddle with a mahout on the neck, in riding bareback program, tourists sit on the elephant's neck or back with a mahout following on the trail. In a no riding program, tourists interact with elephants by feeding, bathing, and walking on the trail without riding. For elephant show, um, normally they use um, elephants that age less than 15 years old because they are so cute at that age. Um, tourists watch a scripted show demonstrating elephant abilities and elephant mahout interactions for about one hour. And the last one we call an observation program. Um, the activity is tourists follow the guides and observe the behavior of elephants, which are controlled by the mahouts nearby. So we went to these camps talk to the camp owners, survey the management, and collected samples from the elephants. 
Before I am going to talk about the group text, I want to let you know that we have published our results in these six articles, all are in the International Academic Peer Review Journals uh, in English. So anybody who are interested can search and read. We also wrote these two review articles to summarize about elephant tourism in Thailand and related welfare activities. I recommend you to read these review articles first, then you will understand more clear when you read um, other articles. And recently we have published a review article which compare welfare parameters of elephants we found in North America and Thailand. Because one of our advisor, Dr. Janine Brown, has been in a part of welfare projects in elephants in North American zoos as well. And she, and she came to uh, help, help us to do the project in Thailand. For our study, a total of 33 camps in three provinces in northern Thailand, um, Chiang Mai, Mae Hong Son, and Chiang Rai were included in the study. We interviewed camp owners or managers or veterinarians about um, their camp and elephant information and um, elephant management related to working equipment rest areas, training, nutrition, and health care, for example. And we also asked about uh, Mahout management. Camp activities, facilities, and environment were also observed in, in every camp that we, we went to. From the survey, we found um, considerable variation, especially in elephant management among camps included sex, age um, of the elephants, type of work, duration of work, duration of chaining or isolation, walking distance and time, type of the rest area during daytime and nighttime, food and water, type of floor and using a, or um, and gas that the Mahout carry to control the elephant. And we hypothesized that some of these factors may affect to elephant health and welfare. At the camp, um, 122 elephants from 15 camps in Chiang Mai were assessed um, the welfare status for one year period. And in general, in human and other animals, we can monitor welfare or well-being uh, of the animals by monitoring glucocorticoid hormone in blood, urine, saliva, or even feces, which um, normally increase in response to stressful conditions by the activation uh, in the brain, like in the picture. So we call it stress hormone. Health assessments are another way and in elephant health involved measures of body condition and foot health. And behavioral studies are a popular approach. Stereotypic behaviors are the most described welfare related behaviors in captive elephants. So all these welfare parameters were assessed in our study. Fresh um, dung samples were collected twice monthly for one year for stress hormone analysis by uh, immunoassay. For body condition, a five point scale was used to assess a body condition by assessing body fat deposition patterns at ribs, pelvis, and backbone of the elephants. Body condition score one represents the lowest or uh, very thin, and five represents the highest levels of body fat or um, very fat. Uh, and body condition score three is the ideal, not underweight or overweight. 
foot health was scored using a four point scale. Um, each foot was given a score zero means no problem, score one might problems, score two moderate problems, or score three severe problems. And the problems included nail crack, nail overgrowth injuries, or infection. Skin wound um, was used to assess in this study uh, because we found that um, some of the elephants have had wound on, uh, especially on the neck from using the equipment. So skin wound was scored using a three point scale. Score zero uh, is no wound was observed. Score one minor wounds such as scratch, mild bleeding. Or score two uh, is a major wounds like deep wounds, severe bleeding or or wound that have uh, infection. And in another study, uh, in the subset of the, the, the previous study, blood samples were collected from uh, 46 elephants twice monthly for one year for lipid and blood sugar analysis. Dr. Tripadat in, in, in this picture was a PhD student at the time who study this part and do the analysis in the laboratories. Information of individual elephant was gathered from Mahmoud interviews, included work routine, restraint, rest area, feeding, watering, and the presence or absence of stereotypic behaviors or the abnormal behaviors. For data analysis, um, standard statistical procedures were used as a science method to test hypothesis. So when we report that any management factors had effect on welfare parameters, that means it was at significance level, like it had strong relationship enough to say that. Now let's see some interesting results. Um, when you read our articles, you may find difficulties of technical terms and statistical methods. So today I'm I try to talk about it in the easy way. For body condition, the majority of um, elephants in this study was overweight and none were body condition score one or underweight. Being fat is not good for elephants like in human. Overweight elephants are at risk of joint, foot and nail problems. And in pregnant elephants, be, being fat can lead to difficult birth because of the oversize of the fetus. We found that elephants with less activities were fatter than working elephants. So exercise is very important. Elephants should have an opportunity to walk and spend their energy. And the program of riding or walking with tourists are beneficial in terms of exercise. Oversupply of food supplement made elephants obese and had higher blood but, uh, glucose and uh, high calorie trees such as banana and sugarcane are the most common food that camps prepare for tourists to feed elephants. And we found that in high tourist season, so many tourists, elephants were obese and had higher blood lipid and glucose compared to low tourist season. That is because many group of tourists per day, many buckets of supplement that feed to the elephant. And we found that elephants with less activities had higher blood sugar than working elephants. So food supplements should be reduced or changed to use lower calorie trees, such as tamarind, watermelon, cucumber, pumpkin, pineapple, for example. 
instead instead of just banana and sugar cane, which had a very high sugar. So elephant camps and guides um, have to explain to tourists why they restrict the amount of supplement. For food health, the majority of elephants had mild food problems, which include uncompli uncomplicated nail cracks, mild overgrowth of nails or cuticles, or mild injuries, and 2% had severe problems. Long duration and distance of walking caused more food problems. As I said, walking is good for their body condition, but however, walking has to be controlled in a suitable amount to prevent food problems. Walking on concrete floor caused more food problems than walking on a ground floor because we think because concrete walking route is hard in, in texture and quite um, hot in summer, that that is not good for the uh, elephant's foot pad and nail. For skin wound, the majority of elephants had no visible wounds and 5% had major wounds. And we found that wounds were caused by uh, equipment, scratch, bed sore, and fighting, uh, because we, we asked from the Mahout what is the cause of this wound. Elephants that Mahouts carried hooks had more wound problems than elephants that Mahouts did not carry hooks. But we think stop using hook is not what we want to solve this problem because hook is an essential tool to carry by a mahout in a free contact system like in Thailand. So we think it is imperative that mahouts be, must be trained in a proper use of the hook and use it only just in case of necessary. Elephants that slept on sand floor had fewer um, wound problems than elephants that slept on ground and concrete floor. Because of the large body weight of elephants, lying down on hard floors might develop sores. But I have to say that sand floor is not practical for every elephant or every camp. It also need more maintenance because of the urine and feces. So at least we recommend camps to use sand floor in old elephants, which many of protective functions of skin decrease. Males had more wound problems than females. Um, as we know that males general, generally are more aggressive and need more intensive control. In addition, fights between males over territory or in competition for mates can cause serious wounds. So elephant camps should have a policy for male elephant management, such as must um, management, social structure management, and it is essential to have well-experienced mahouts to take care males, elephants. For the stress hormone, we found that males had more stress than females. As I said, male elephants need more control due to more aggressive and social behaviors, and this might lead to higher stress. Elephants that walked longer duration and distance had less stress than elephants that walked less. Elephants with less activities had more stress than working elephant. So tourist activities give like uh, opportunities for elephants to walk, exercise, and socialize with their herd and with their mahouts, which may prevent stress.
but in high tourist season, elephants had higher stress than low tourist season. High number of tourists per elephants might cause stress to elephants, like in this picture, so many uh, tourists um, that um, stand around uh, an elephant that may make the, the elephant fear or, or anxiety. So elephant camps to control the workload for elephants and the ratio of tourists per elephant. For rest areas, we found that during um, day daytime break, elephants with socialization had less stress than elephants with isolation. Um, in, if we go to the elephant camps, elephants are usually kept on short chain um, in, in the daytime break, which prevent tactile interactions with con specifics. So free roaming in open areas does provide opportunities for elephants to socialize and to interact. During nighttime, elephants that tethered in the forest had less stress than elephants that kept in the camp, inside the camp. And we think that forests provide elephants with more natural environments and offer opportunities to explore and forage, even when chained. Normally, elephants um, um, put, put the elef elephant can put the elephant in the forest with long chain, like 10 meters to 30 uh, meters. During nighttime, elephants that uh, kept in the shed had similar stress level with elephants that kept in the enclosure. At the, you can see from the picture of the shed and the, the enclosure. So this means either shed or enclosure can be used in elephant camps. And Hook and chain were not stress factors to elephants from the, our model of the statistic. However, using hooks can cause skin wound, as I mentioned before, and chaining also restrict um, social interactions. So using of hook and chain just in case of necessary are recommended. try to play the video. This video show an example of stereotypic behavior when an elephant was chained. So anybody who, who uh, has not heard about the uh, stereotypic behaviors before, um, stereotypic behaviors can be defined as repetitive and seemingly functionless behavior patterns that are reported to occur in a variety of species, including elephants. And from the Mahout interview, we found that 25% of elephants uh, presented stereotypic behaviors and 75% not. And elephants with stereotypic behaviors had less stress hormone level than elephants without stereotypic behaviors. Our finding supports the coping hypothesis, which stereotypic behavior may function to cope with stressful environments. And, um, but in our study, in this study, the presence of stereotypic behaviors was only noted by Mahmoud interview and observation during the physical examination, which lasted only a few minutes. So additional uh, studies are needed to confirm this finding. In conclusion, we found that Health and welfare indicators can be controlled by management practices to prevent um, obesity, 
let elephants walk and exercise and reduce high calorie treats to prevent foot problems let elephants walk on natural floor avoid concrete floor and avoid um, too long or too far walking to prevent skin wound mahout should should use uh, equipment properly and let elephants sleep on sand floor or um, soft substrate if possible to prevent stress give elephants something to do let them do activities and exercise control tourist number chain elephants in the forest if, if, if possible and promote socialization so now we know that there are many management factors that affect to elephant health and welfare not only type of work we cannot just say that riding is bad bathing is bad hope is bad chain is bad but we have to concern all of these factors and most importantly it is recommended to use a combination of welfare parameters to cover um, the various effects of stress and management it is useful to assess welfare from physical physiological and behavioral parameters only one parameter may not enough to address welfare problems in elephants actually our members have also studied other welfare parameters such as the immunoglobulin a or iga we hope that the results will be used to develop science-based guidelines or standards for the management of elephants used in tourism for their better health and welfare and to get the best guidelines there is a need of more studies more elephants more camps which should cover um, other regions other parts of thailand because actually we have about 250 elephant camps in thailand right now and we study only um uh, a few camps um like only 33 camps here i would like to acknowledge um, these organizations and all the owners managers and mahouts at elephant camps for their support and cooperation uh, we have published all the results and go to present uh, in the national level meetings and the international level meetings and also could go to talk to the elephant owners elephant camp owners and the um, mahouts to to um, tell them what we found and how to improve their elephants health and welfare Right now, we are working on a project about stereotypic behaviors. We are observing these behaviors in elephants. We would like to know if sex, age, management, or life history events would be possible causes of stereotypic behaviors. And also how many patterns of the behaviors and how it affects elephants like their muscle. Mahouts are interviewed about history events of the elephants and the presence or absence of stereotypic behaviors that they found from the elephants. We have observed 170 elephants in Chiang Mai already, um, but we set a goal about 300 elephants. If we find any effects of stereotypic behaviors on elephants, we will find a way to reduce the behaviors and recommend the camps. Well, today I have shared our published studies about welfare of tourist camp elephants in Northern Thailand. Hope everyone who is listening 
can understand and share this information to your family and friends. We avoid using personal judgment about what is good or bad for elephants, but we promote the use of studies and science instead. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Any questions? Thank you very much, Dr. Um, come and come and have a look at observe the we do have some elephants on site that do stereotype and we would like to actually find ways to reduce it they do seem to stereotype even on free roaming time when they have choice to go and be with other elephants they sometimes seem to choose the stereotype so please do come and observe and help help us with that okay. uh, you know where we are um if you if you're looking to get 300 elephants we can i think give you at least three more um so <laughs> okay. thank you uh, no problem thank you it's just the, the more we know the better we can help them um so yes, first of all, to the uh, Zoom room, would anybody like to ask any questions? Please do unmute yourself and, and ask away. By the way, so um, Vicho sent a message. So I think you can just turn yeah. your microphone on and talk with Dr. Im straight away. Okay, uh, Dr. Im, Kap, uh, oops, is my video on too? All right. Now we have right, uh, Dr. Hello, Dr. Im, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask, you mentioned that uh, the elephants that were, that had activities to do uh, were, were more like, were more likely to be having lesser stress conditions. That's right. That's what you, you, what you noticed. Is that correct? Yeah. The elephant that, that have um, less activity have um, more stress. Okay, so so does that does that mean that um, for ex let's talk about uh, an ideal dreamlike um, elephant sanctuary situation in which the elephant is not asked to do anything, no pictures with tourists, tourists have to keep ten to twenty meters away from the. In this situation, are you saying that the mahout should in some way instruct the elephant to do certain activities like walk from one place to another, because if they don't, they would just roam, uh, just freely is that is that correct to understand yes yeah, yeah correct correct very correct because um i think uh, the elephants need to walk and socialize need to exercise not just stand and eat and and like feel bored like feel nothing to do feel nothing to to um participate i think give something to, uh for elephant to do can prevent boredom and and let them let them have um, less stress. So, you, like like you mentioned, we can design in the uh, in observation camp or no riding camp. Um, like um, the mahout can ride the elephant or walk with them um, from one point to another point. For example, um, four kilometers or five kilometers a day around the camp. So this this is uh, so in a way uh, it, I know that this is kind of like a, a different side of the question, but let's say I had uh, one thousand rye and I had uh, one a few elephants in there. Uh, would would they would they do this behavior naturally? Would they actually just go about do their own thing, walk around, come back and eat food at a certain place and be healthy? Or even though if they have a thousand rye, you still have to tell them to do something go there or you know to get the exercise which which is the chosen path over here um i think if you have a land and very large area i think they can walk by themselves like they have a choice to walk and enough like and have a land to walk enough but in a very um small space like in a small camp you have uh, the restrict um, area to walk, I think you have to set up the, the, the walking route for them and walk like three or four rounds a day um, in the morning and in, in the evening, I think. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So. Yeah, uh, my, my take for that on video for what it's worth is um, a lot of the elephant camps where they are um, where the, the tourist camps are not operating on a thousand rye and they're, keep, they're actually in a way keeping elephants, they possibly even telling elephants to stay in one place, although guests would never see that, to be in view of the tourists all the time. 
Um, and I think that's if you're going to have that as your your model, then you're going to have to uh, you have to build in some exercise. Um, if you have your thousand rye and they're all over the place, or, or you're just following them as they naturally choose where to go, then um, then you may be different. I think every elephant and everything every elephant is different as well. Um, so what we found here with with us is we have some elephants who, given the choice, will walk go off on missions and do long distances and we're not too worried about them but we have some elephants who just will stand in one place if left to their own <laughs> devices and those have got very fat until we started to listen to Dr Ian's advice. Okay, um, next. Okay, nobody else from um, Zoom so ooh, would you like to start asking the questions from Facebook or would you like to, me to read oh. them out? Well, I can ask some. You can help me with some because we have a many question now. By the way, since you talk about the elephant have to exercise, so the question from Nisa is like, what is the recommend um, distance for the elephant? Like, you know, how long they should work, how many kilometers per day? Okay, thank you, Nisa. Yeah, like, like, like I said. Um, um, for five kilometers a day is the is the um, not normal, but in general, in white elephants, walk about that. Yeah, walk about four four to five kilometers a day. So I recommend the camp to to let the elephants walk at least four to five kilometers a day. Control their food, as we know, Dr. Nisa is trying. To do, so. <laughs> That's a, a bit of bit of in in-house in um in-house banter um sorry next okay. so, well, can you... Im, sorry dr Im, i was just to look so this is this is information that's been uh found about asian wild elephants is five kilometer the kind of the range that they do in a day uh let's see i think i wrote this in my paper While Im is looking it up, um, yeah, it, it depends. I think on habitat as well. So some elephants, where they have to walk, have to walk a long way to, to get to food and water and everything else, will walk further than that. Uh, but certain averages have been found out, um, and it, that very much depends on, on where they are. Uh, I don't believe this want to answer for her. But, uh, if I was from Asian. Oh, while she's still looking up, let it, let us know when you found it in. Um, yeah, yeah. But it, it it does it does seem to depend on on habitat and, and different areas and season even. Um, if there's if there's lots of food and lots of water and everything else in one area, they can stick around to an, in another area in that area until, um, from my observation, uh, until another herd of elephants comes along and pushes them away. Sometimes and then they have to go and find something else. But that, I, I would say five kilometers would be a minimum. But, Any question? Okay, so for the question from Dr. Ingrid, like, were the elephants with um, server food problems also underweight or, you know, experienced mother issues? Um, can you clarify, John? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I think no need to, yes, I was going to say, to clarify, Ingrid should be honest. Uh, but yes, so I guess the question is, were the elephants with, did the elephants with bad foot condition also have other, other conditions that you noticed as well? I, I, I don't think I understand the question. Um, what about the... Hi, can I speak Thai? Yes, yes. Yes. ว่าคําถามน่าจะถามว่าเท้าที่มีปัญหาค่ะของช้างมันนําไปสู่ปัญหาอย่างอื่นอีกด้วยมั้ยเวลาแบบเอ่อถ้าเป็นแพรหรือ
infection if they if they um don't if they not receive the improper treatment they can lead to the infection yeah okay um, now let me read and try. We have so many questions now, and which is very, very long um, <laughs> comments and questions. But John, you okay. can help me if. <laughs> okay, so another one from Dr. Ingrid. What do you say to people who refuse to acknowledge your um, peer review um, science? How to convey the finding in a way that people respond to? For some people, like many tourists, many people, when I, I this is what I'm guessing from the question, but then many, many people come to Thailand and sometimes they have their own perspective about writing, about how should we look after the elephant. And even you have the science, like papers and um, research, but then some of them might not also believe from what you say. So what would you say for that one? I just keep doing <laughs> for me i just keep doing that uh, the right thing i want um to do and i convince other scientists to do more studies i think only my study cannot um make all people believe um what 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 we found but we need more studies and i just want to say that um please open your mind to listen to uh, other other fighting um, that we as a scientist not because I I not get any money from the camps <laughs> yeah so um, we just want to find the answers the the best answer for for using the elephants in our country and really clear mind of, of myself and and want want everybody to open their mind and be careful to listen from the the data on the media the social media it includes both um true and false information uh, please be careful to be one of the I don't know how to say like the the business yeah so um because some business try to um say the bad thing to prevent the tourists to go to another place but recommend uh their uh their place instead for, uh, like like this so so please be careful to be the victims of the the social media. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's very good to hear. <laughs> Would you like me to read um, Kain's question? Cool. Yes, yes. Um, so Dr. Kai asked about it, uh, since you mentioned anything about the stereotypic behavior, and one of the questions that um, have you at enrichment as in variable in your study, um, do you notice any, you know, different any changes when you put enrichment for elephant during the free time or when they don't have the program? Um, so they asked about, uh, oh, thank you, Kai, Kaiuma, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, so you asked me about the, the um, did I put the enrichment as one of the factors, right? Of the stereotypic behavior. Yes, that was the question. Did you did you use enrichment as well, first of all were any camps using um, environmental enrichment, and did you use that as a uh, as a as a did you factor that in as did it make a difference to um, the stress levels of the elephants whether they were using that or not? Yeah, I think that is that's a good idea because um, now I I just want to. Uh, survey the the presence of the stereotypic behaviors and uh, the variation of the age and sex first, and then next step I I would like to see the any management factors, or yeah, it's good to include the 
enrichment factors into the, the model as well to see if the enrichment can reduce the stereotypic behaviors because I think there are many papers that published about the, the uh, using enrichment can reduce the stereotypic behaviors. Uh, but Dr. I'm just uh, curious, but in any of the uh, infant camps that you went to, were there any enrichment around at all? Mm, for elephant camps, uh, only a few. I think only a few in in the um, observation program they have they have the 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 enrichment that that an object. But uh, in in general camps, enrichment in in their belief and and my belief as well is the opportunities to socialize opportunities to forage in the forest that 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 are the enrichment very good enrichment for the uh, social animal like elephants that um, um, I think most of the camp have the opportunity have a time for the elephants to socialize um, uh, at the free time with our tourists and also uh, bring the elephants to the nearby forest to forage. Like I said, that they, they um, long chain the elephant in the forest and turn, I mean, then they don't let all of the elephants in the camp in one day, but like today, these two elephants, tomorrow these two elephants to protect the, the forest because we have to concern about the forest of the society of the community that the elephants best. Great, thanks. So yes, so you would think no, no, a lot of camps don't have artificial environmental enrichment, but they they actually have by elephant socialization and time in the forest, they, uh, they overcome that. that. That makes a lot of sense. Oh, do we have a next one? Like yes. Oh my gosh, we, we have so many questions. But by the way, just um comment from Dr. Chachot about the food problems that um I think oh. who asked about it. Um, is on the phone. Yeah. Um, um he said that the food problems can lead to lameness and then can be the colic if elephant cannot walk much and no GI mobility. So yeah, it's will effect in the long term. Thank you, and, Dr. B. <laughs> okay, um, the next one from Kun Titi Pong. So, like, any comments on the current welfare stage of captive elephants during the COVID 19 pandemic? Yeah, so um, the, the place that, that I also work is the Center of uh, Elephant and Wildlife Research at uh, Chiang Mai University. We also go to survey and study of the elephant camps during the COVID-19 to see that if there is any um, effects of the, the change, the, the management that, that, that changed in during the COVID-19 to the elephant's health and welfare as well. And um, we found that currently, I think most of the elephants are taken care you know in a well status they do the same like mostly the same as be, at be, as before covid they try to do everything the same feed the same thing feed the uh, same amount of food and um, provide them a water and and uh, let them walk some camp um very very uh, good they let the elephants be together with our tourists without nobody but being together to socialize not chain them in the enclosure or in the chat only because in during the COVID-19 no tourist no program so um in the first months that we have we that COVID attacked most of the elephants uh, were chained in in the enclosure all day, all night. And after we found the 
the the problems of like colic or lameness or the foot problem um most of the elephant camps let the elephants to walk um in the evening and in the morning and do more socialization and i think they try to do like this um until the tourists come back yeah i hope that uh, when the tourists come back, do you think some of the camps will change their activities a little bit to allow for more of that as well? Or you don't know yet? Yeah, we don't know yet because I think they they might see what what group of tourists that, that are coming, right? And yeah, as we know, elephant camps want tourists and sometimes they change they're willing to change the activities to to serve the desire of tourists and we found in um for example um five years ago the new trend of no riding came into thailand and so many camps changed from riding with a saddle to no riding and we found a overweight elephants because of the um, no exercise, just eat and yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so they know that already. They have a lesson, they have an experience. So I think now they know that even they change the activities, they can set a program that pro can protect the problems of each, um, each program. Okay, the next question from Rip Box. Um, since I think the overall of your your research that um, mentioned about um, the the tourist the camp that have a low number of tourists and then the program that involved with walking with the uh, appropriate distance and also even walking or riding. It is points that um, I think I'm confused a little bit. But yeah, is that all? you say it's good for the elephant. So they say, can they take this point to, you know, look at the camp or the plate like this? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, I think riding, in, in my opinion, from, from our survey and, and from my opinion, riding is not bad, as I said. Um, you can ride the elephant with a saddle, you can ride bareback and, um, uh you can you can also go to the no riding camp or the observation program camp i think um it, all of them have their own uh, management that can protect the problems that are uh, caused to the elephant uh, for example in the saddle riding camp they can protect the the painful of of the back by decide the uh, saddle to match the individual elephant's back and control the tourist weight. Like they select the, the big size of the tourist to the big size of the elephant to sit. Yeah, something like that. And uh, they also control the walking round per day and the walking hours per day as well to to protect the back pain or the wound on the back because these kind of camps have many experience about it they open about like more than 20 years already and they learn what is the problem and they solve these problems already yeah so can I say like doesn't matter what program you will do, it depends on management, right? How you would manage elephant, doesn't exactly. matter like riding, saddle or, or anything. Exactly. Yes. Um, one more, one, another question about enrichment. What are the options for en en environmental enrichment for elephants in camps in Thailand? Environmental enrichment, right? Yes. Yeah, that, that is a big problem in um, many camps. Uh, I think in, in the north, it's, it's, it's not a big problem because we, we have um, 
so many mountain around the elephant camps and that we can um, go to talk to the, the government organization to use the land uh, for the elephants. But in other regions of, of Thailand, I think that is a big problem. They may don't have enough the uh, mountain to, to use. And, um, and um, so elephants not have uh, opportunity to use the forest. So I think there is a need for the government government organization to think about this. Uh, this will let um, the elephants opportunity to forage and find what they want to eat and um, somehow can find the herbs that good for, for the health as well. Yeah. Thanks. Talk about and and we'll, be, we'll be doing another environmental enrichment workshop at some point. We've already done one a couple of years ago. We will do another one when COVID's over and we have funding and all sorts of other things. So we will okay. keep working on that. Good. I think that that would be a good idea because here we do um, have um, enrichment for the elephants and mostly it's not going to last for long as well. One of the problems that we spend like three, four days working on is like very hard. Elephant yeah. uses for like five minutes and boom, gone. <laughs> <laughs> the other one also like um, just a comment from Kai as she, she thinks that if you create enrichment program for bulls elephant, the stress hormone may reduce in bulls and bulls may likely easier to handle. So yeah, I think this, this one is also similar. We, we put some enrichment for our very active elephant who like to run away. And then after that, she's, she was very tired and then <laughs> run anymore. <laughs> Um, I think we have more questions from, uh, we have, do you have for your presentation, for your paperwork, do you have the report in Thai? Because my yo, she said it would be nice to chat to current people or to Thai people to get to know more about this thing. Uh, yes, yes, I can, I can share that for you. Um, actually, I... I did not do it by myself, but uh, TAT, the uh, uh, the Tourism Authority of Thailand, uh, did that for me uh, in 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 Thai and, and also in English, like like a conclusion of the study. Yeah. Okay, and another question from Rijo, but he just directly send it to me <laughs> he might not realize that but then we'll pass it and get the cop can we get the copy of your presentation because some very useful information about you know welfare or the fact actually here yeah i think i think you can <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing a secret <laughs> yeah okay. i i i hope um more and more people listen to my study, our studies, and share, um, and be a part of the judgment of, of anybody. Yeah, we're very willing to share. Uh, Dr. I just wanted to ask the general question for, for much smaller based elephant camps who are much smaller levels, five elephants or four elephants, or, uh, if they wanted to do uh, mini study of their own something like this would there be some guidelines that they could follow to check or or is all the stuff that you done done really high tech and extremely expensive stuff to do or is it, is it something that's very easily done at a low level okay um i think you can do i, I think they can do the the physical um, measures like body condition scoring, um, foot health scoring, and wound scoring. It's very easy, and I and we also put the the method to do these in the papers as well. And you can also do the uh, stereotypic behaviors like observation in general. But for the the glucocorticoid hormone or stress hormone analysis that may need um, more stuff and need a laboratory to, to test. Yeah, and also for the 
glucose and lipid analysis as well. It, it will need um, laboratories as well and, and cost money. But I think if, if, if you can do, I think you can do like a physical and behavioral measures, zero, zero bad. <laughs> Agreed. Some training required. Uh, and also you can keep talking to Dr. Im and be, try, try and become part of a new, next study or everybody else because um, it, it, it's the other thing, sample handling with, with Elephant Dung. I remember we, when we were first part of the study, we, uh, we destroyed all the samples by mistake and ruined a lot of work. So. But yes, as you say, behavioral observations and, uh, and wound scores, foot scores with a bit of training, anyone can do. And everyone who manages elephants should do, I believe. And to answer the question from Rachel, did, did I correct that you asked me about uh, walking distances? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I found it already in my paper. <laughs> yeah, so walking distances um, have been reported to range from three to nine kilometer per day in wide Asian elephants, seven kilometer per day in forest camp India, and five kilometer per day in North American zoos. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, any more questions? No, that's it. Actually, it's very popular day today. So many questions. <laughs> I'd say it's, yeah. it's such, such a great <laughs> subject. So, um, well, in that case, I think all that remains is, or thank you to all the questioners. Thank you to everybody who joined the Zoom. And most of all, thank you to Dr. Im for, first of all, the study and then agreeing to, to come and uh, to let everybody else know about it. Um, yes, we will try, or Dr. Im, we can contact later, or Vijo, you can contact me and I will put you in touch to have a copy of the uh, a copy of the presentation, but also I've recorded this, so I'm going to leave it live both on Facebook and also put it on YouTube. So if you want the uh, copies of the whole, the whole presentation, you'll be able to refer people to and they'll be here for forever. So uh, that's, that's another way to do it. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I've got to finally say thank you to our sponsors, Anantara, who, are, um, as you can hear, there are people in the background, there are people here in the bar, so it's very good. Um, we're getting a little busier and our elephants are, well, they've always had something to do anyway, because we, we had the live streams and everything else, but they're now having guest activities again as well. So life is returning slowly to normal. Um, and to say that next week's, oh, I've forgotten what next week's. Um, what about this week first, Friday? Oh, Friday. Oh, yes. Don't forget to join us on Friday for another live stream at what? Oh, you can do the plug. You know what time it is. <laughs> okay. So on this Friday, I will be able to do weekly live stream at 7.30 and then 4 o'clock. So if you are free, if you would like to, you know, come to see the, about Joy Us, the Elephant Program mini walk, please come and join us. Please do come. And this, that'll be live on Facebook. Um, um, with uh, Wu and probably Dr. Nisa as well, we'll be we'll demonstrating that. Um, yes. Yes, and what's next week? Next week's professional lecture, do you remember? No, okay. Well, so I have there, to shake. There will be another professional lecture next week. I think it is Michael Fulshaw letting elephants go into the, the forests of Laos. So ex-captive elephants being released into the wild in soft release and being monitoring them and how he achieved that, which is another fascinating subject and something else that is groundbreaking. Um, I don't think he's got any scientific studies out on it yet, but I know they're working on them. So I think that's what we're going to be talking about next uh, next Wednesday. If not, there will be another elephant professional lecture. They'll be more professional than me because they will know what they're talking about. Um, by the way, you are wrong. Okay, thank you very much. Next week is about conserve China's last 300 oh, elephants. Oh, Becky, Becky Shu. Okay, so, challenge. Yep. Okay, so a, another very fascinating lecture will be all about yeah, China's wild elephants and how to, and, and the, 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 opportunity up there and, and the work up there to preserve them and how they work well with uh, and, and how they work with local communities and everything else to to keep those 300 elephants uh, happy and going and in the wild so yeah equally fascinating already wild elephants thank you all um i'm sorry for forgetting your lecture becky Xu, if you're listening um so that is it all that remains of me to do is thank once again dr im for uh, for being a part of this and for for doing the studies and for, for taking it forward and for um and for helping us, because um, we had, because we know you, we had um, future information or early information as to what your findings were and were able to manage our elephants better um, and um, helping manage everybody 
all, the, all of us who look after man elephants around the world um, to manage that better. So really, really important work. Thank you very much. And thank you for talking to us. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, too. Until Friday and next Wednesday, everybody, thank you very much for joining. And please do join us again. OK, recording stopped no longer live on Facebook. Thanks very much for that. Fantastic. Um, oh, all is gone. Had a nervous breakdown. I'm, I'm here. Uh -huh. you have, you're having a nervous breakdown. Most of people gone, so it, it's, yeah. So, okay. so nobody here already. Nobody here. OK, thanks, guys. Thank you very much for that. We'll, um, oh, I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else will see you later on. And, uh, Bye bye.